how is this even possible? SpaceX just built something that makes NASA's rockets look like they were assembled with duct tape. The Starship V3's vertical design is so revolutionary, it's literally humiliating every other rocket manufacturer on the planet. But here's the crazy part. While NASA is still welding rockets the same way they did 50 years ago, SpaceX's new vertical steel plates can survive 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit at 17,600 miles per hour. This isn't just an upgrade, this is complete annihilation. Let's dive right in. So what exactly happened behind closed doors that made NASA engineers panic? The answer lies in something so simple, yet so revolutionary, that it's completely rewriting the rules of rocket science. For over 50 years, every rocket manufacturer on Earth, including NASA, Blue Origin, ULA, and even early SpaceX, built rockets the exact same way. Take horizontal steel rings, weld them together like pancakes in a stack, and hope they don't crack under pressure. It worked for the Apollo missions, so why change it, right? But here's the problem nobody talks about. When Starship hits orbital velocity at 17,600 miles per hour, those horizontal welds become ticking time bombs. At 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt copper, every single weld line turns into a weak spot. It's like building a skyscraper out of stacked dinner plates and expecting it to survive an earthquake. NASA knew this. They've known it for decades, but they kept using the same method because, well, because that's how they've always done it. And that's exactly when SpaceX decided to flip the entire industry upside down. Picture this. While NASA engineers were still debating whether their 50-year-old welding method could handle modern rocket demands, SpaceX was already building something that would make those debates completely irrelevant. Instead of horizontal rings, they went vertical. Massive steel plates running from bottom to top, creating a structure so fundamentally different that it doesn't even look like the same type of vehicle. But why does this matter so much? Think about a skyscraper. You don't build it by stacking floors horizontally and hoping they hold together. You use vertical support beams that can actually handle the stress. SpaceX just applied this basic engineering principle to rockets, and the results are absolutely mind-blowing. Those vertical welds run parallel to the airflow during flight. Less drag, less turbulence, better efficiency. But here's the kicker. They distribute stress so evenly that the entire structure becomes nearly indestructible. We're talking about a design that can survive forces that would tear traditional rockets apart. Remember those rough, visible welds on earlier starships that looked like they were assembled in someone's garage? SpaceX didn't just improve them. They obliterated the entire concept of traditional rocket welding. They're now using robotic laser welding that creates surfaces smoother than a luxury sports car. We're talking about precision so advanced that it makes traditional rocket manufacturing look like blacksmithing. Every weld is perfect, every surface flawless, every joint stronger than anything NASA has ever produced. But here's what really sent shockwaves through the industry. While other manufacturers are struggling to build one rocket per year, SpaceX is planning to manufacture three Starships per day. Three per day. How is this even possible? The vertical panel design means fewer welds, which means faster manufacturing. Robotic laser welding means consistent quality without human error. And the modular design means multiple production lines can work simultaneously. NASA is still handcrafting rockets like artisan furniture. SpaceX is building the aerospace equivalent of the Ford Model T production line. Let's talk about what really made NASA lose sleep at night. The new Super Heavy Booster isn't just bigger. It's a complete redefinition of what's possible in rocket engineering. We're looking at 72.3 meters of pure rocket power carrying 3,650 tons of propellant. That's enough fuel to power a small city. The thrust, 8,240 metric tons at liftoff. That's nearly double what the mighty Saturn V could produce, and it's fully reusable. But here's where it gets absolutely insane. Elon Musk revealed that future versions could carry up to 4,000 tons of propellant, delivering 10,000 metric tons of thrust. That's not just an improvement. That's a complete annihilation of everything we thought was possible. While NASA is still celebrating landing one rover on Mars, SpaceX is building rockets that could deliver 200 tons to orbit, 
while remaining fully reusable. That's like launching an entire space station in a single flight. Now here's where the story takes a completely unexpected turn. Look at the new booster design and you'll notice something strange. Those engine nozzles that were clearly visible on older boosters, they're completely hidden now. Why would SpaceX hide their most powerful feature? The answer reveals the most ambitious upgrade in rocket history. Traditional rocket engines are basically controlled explosions that need massive external protection because they can't handle their own heat. It's like building a car engine that melts from its own exhaust. SpaceX looked at this fundamental problem and said, what if we just build engines that don't need protection? Enter Raptor 3, an engine so advanced that it has integrated cooling circuits built directly into its structure. The cooling pathways are embedded throughout every component, creating a circulatory system that keeps the engine alive even in the most extreme conditions. But here's the genius part. If there's a fuel leak during flight, Raptor 3 just burns it off in the surrounding plasma. No explosion, no catastrophic failure just a controlled burn that keeps the mission going. Here's where NASA's limitations become painfully obvious. The space shuttle, their crown jewel, never achieved true heat shield reusability. After every mission, they had to replace thousands of tiles. It was like rebuilding the entire spacecraft every time it flew. SpaceX looked at this 40-year-old problem and decided to solve what NASA couldn't. They're building a fully reusable heat shield that works not just for Earth re-entry, but for Mars return missions too. Those small protrusions at the nose cone tip, they're precision-engineered lifting hooks that can handle the entire vehicle's weight during assembly. When removed, only a single thermal protection tile needs to be installed over each one. That's the kind of engineering elegance that makes traditional rocket design look clumsy and primitive. Here's a problem that's been driving rocket engineers crazy for decades. How do you land a rocket when most of your fuel's gone? Traditional approach? Keep landing fuel in the main tanks. But picture this. You have a massive tank that's mostly empty with just a little fuel sloshing around at the bottom. It's like trying to balance a basketball with a marble rolling around inside. Completely unstable and impossible to control. SpaceX's solution was so elegant, it seems obvious in hindsight. Move the landing fuel to a dedicated header tank at the very tip of the nose cone. This solves three critical problems simultaneously. Stability, insulation, and balance. The fuel stays cold throughout the entire mission because it's in a smaller, better insulated tank. The vehicle maintains perfect balance during the skydiver-style re-entry because the weight is positioned at the front and the main tanks can be run completely dry during ascent, maximizing efficiency. Why didn't anyone think of this before? They did. They just couldn't make it work. SpaceX didn't just think of it. They built it, tested it, and perfected it. Here's where SpaceX made a decision that has rocket engineers around the world completely baffled. They reduced the number of grid fins from four to three. But why mess with a proven system? Grid fins are what allow rockets to land with pinpoint precision. Falcon 9 uses four fins and it works perfectly. Starship used four fins and it worked. So why change to an asymmetric three-fin configuration? The answer reveals SpaceX's absolute confidence in their new design. They've optimized the aerodynamics so well that the fourth fin became unnecessary weight. It's like removing a wheel from a car and making it work even better. But here's the risky part. This is completely untested. While the four-fin setup has proven itself through hundreds of successful landings, the three-fin configuration is stepping into uncharted territory. One wrong calculation and billions of dollars of development could crash into the ocean. Now let's talk about what's powering this entire revolution. While NASA is still using engine designs from the 1970s, SpaceX just unveiled Raptor 3, an engine so advanced that competitors thought the first photos were fake. United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno himself couldn't believe what he was seeing. The engine looked so stripped down, so impossibly simple, that he thought SpaceX was trying to fool everyone, but they weren't. This was the real thing. Raptor 3 produces 280 tons of thrust. That's 30% more than the original Raptor. It's also 100 kilograms lighter while requiring 1,000 kilograms less supporting hardware on the vehicle. But the real breakthrough? It looks like a skeleton compared to earlier versions. How did they achieve this? 
Simple. The best part is no part. The best process is no process. If a component isn't absolutely necessary, it's gone. Every eliminated part is one less potential failure point. Here's what nobody in the traditional aerospace industry wants to admit. SpaceX isn't just building better rockets. They're using manufacturing techniques that are years ahead of everyone else. Metal 3D printing allows them to integrate multiple components into single pieces. Cooling jackets that would have required dozens of separate parts are now printed as one unit. Flanges that were notorious failure points? Eliminated entirely through integrated manufacturing. Elon Musk admitted that if repairs are needed inside these engines, they'll literally have to cut them open. But that's not a bug, it's a feature. Fewer access points mean fewer potential failure modes. SpaceX is preparing Block 3 Starship for its first flight by the end of this year. Every component we've discussed, the vertical panels, the Raptor 3 engines, the new heat shield, the header tanks, will be tested together for the first time. This isn't just another test flight. This is the moment when SpaceX either proves their vertical design revolution works or discovers they've been building the most expensive failure in aerospace history. But here's what's really keeping competitors awake at night. SpaceX has already won. Even if Block 3 fails spectacularly, they've forced every other rocket manufacturer to abandon their old methods and chase SpaceX's innovations. While NASA's Artemis program struggles to get humans back to the moon using 1970s technology, SpaceX is building the infrastructure for permanent Mars colonies. The gap isn't just technological, it's philosophical. NASA still thinks about rockets as expensive, single-use vehicles that need to be perfect on the first try. SpaceX treats them as reusable spacecraft that improve through rapid iteration and testing. The vertical design isn't just better engineering, it's inevitable. Every aerospace company will eventually have to adopt similar techniques or be left behind. The question isn't whether they'll copy SpaceX's approach, but how long it will take them to catch up. And by the time they do, SpaceX will already be three generations ahead, manufacturing rockets at a scale that makes today's production numbers look like a science experiment. The age of traditional rocket design is over. SpaceX didn't just build a better rocket, they built the future. So here we are. SpaceX just turned the entire rocket industry into a history lesson. While NASA and traditional manufacturers are still welding rockets like it's 1970, SpaceX is building the future with vertical panels, laser precision, and manufacturing techniques that seem almost alien. But here's what really matters. This isn't just about better rockets. This is about the moment humanity stops crawling and starts running toward the stars. Every vertical weld, every Raptor 3 engine, every impossible manufacturing breakthrough, they're all stepping stones to Mars. The question isn't whether SpaceX will succeed, they already have. The real question is, what happens when making rockets becomes as routine as building cars? When launching to space costs less than a cross-country flight, we're about to find out. And honestly, I think we're going to love what comes next. What do you think will shock the industry more? SpaceX's next impossible breakthrough or how long it takes everyone else to catch up? Let me know in the comments below. Unexpected. Elon Musk just revealed Starship's massive thruster upgrade that could save Mars missions. But here's the shocking part. The current system completely failed during Flight 9, sending the 250-ton beast tumbling out of control. How did this happen? And why is this new hot gas thruster upgrade five times more powerful? Most importantly, without this fix, Mars colonization is impossible. This is the difference between making it to Mars or watching billions become space junk. Let's dive right in. Dive. So what exactly happened during Flight 9 that had space engineers questioning everything they thought they knew about Starship? Picture a 250-ton spacecraft hurtling through space, suddenly becoming as helpless as a leaf in the wind. The attitude control system, 
those crucial tiny thrusters that keep Starship pointed exactly where it needs to be, completely failed when a propellant leak drained the main tanks of pressure. But here's the terrifying part that nobody talks about. Without those thrusters, Starship became a massive, uncontrolled projectile. It couldn't orient itself for re-entry, couldn't execute landing burns, couldn't do anything except tumble helplessly through the void until it was ultimately lost. This wasn't just a minor technical glitch. This was a fundamental design flaw that could kill Mars colonization before it even begins. The current system relies entirely on something called ullage gas thrusters, essentially venting pressurized gas from the main fuel tanks to create tiny bursts of control thrust. It worked perfectly in testing, seemed logical on